Hello, how's everyone? Has anyone been here for the first two sessions? No, you're all here for this one. I saw the first one, it's absolutely amazing. It's so good to be a part of this and uh, thank you all for coming along and listening to the stories today. I wanna tell you about my story. My name is Doug. I've been with the bank for approximately 12 years. I started in Launceston, Tasmania. I'm now a equities associate with Comsec. Um, so how does a orphan in Bangladesh go from this to this and even this? That's me performing stand-up comedy in New York City last November. <laughs> so, <laughs> thank you. But um, I take it a lot of people here have uh, heard them of the movie Lion. Have you heard the movie Lion? For those of you who haven't seen it, it's a, it's a great story. It's about a young boy in India. His name is Saru. He was born in India. He was adopted to Hobart in Tasmania. Uh, he basically, he got on a plane, he found his mum. My life is very similar. I was born in Dhaka, Bangladesh. I was adopted to Launceston in Tasmania. I got on a plane, I found Krispy Kreme. <laughs> so, <laughs> I've got to admit, I love a donut. Has anyone seen a donut wall upstairs too, by the way? Go check that out. It's pretty good. Um, but look, I want to also reference another movie um, from the 90s, Sliding Doors. I'm not sure if anyone's seen it with Gwyneth Paltrow. It coined the phrase that uh, is on the monitors now, a sliding doors moment. Tiny, seemingly inconsequential moments that can alter the trajectory of future events. Now, that's what I want to refer to today is because there's been a couple of decisions in my life that I didn't get a choice in that have actually changed my life. Now, we should all take ownership for our own choices. I understand that. But sometimes, somewhere, someone makes a choice for us that's well beyond our control. This here, I have to take you back to Bangladesh in 1974. This is Kamalapur train station. It's a, one of the largest train stations in Bangladesh, if not the largest. It's very famous because you've probably seen photos of the trains coming in with hundreds of people just all over them. It's absolutely crazy. One of the things about this train station that isn't readily available to knowledge is the amount of homeless people that live in and around this train station. Um, I wouldn't put a number on it because putting a number on it means that they exist. To the world, at this level of poverty, people do not exist. So my mother, my birth mother, lived in and around this train station. Now, this brings us to sliding doors moment number one for me. This is me when I was taken to a hospital in 1974. So my mother, my birth mother, made the decision somewhere in that year that she could no longer look after me. Quite ill, quite malnourished. She went to a hospital and dropped me off. Now, that's a pretty big decision because she had a choice to take me to multiple places. If she'd taken me to an orphanage, a police station, even a military point, I would have ended up in the system and I would have had a much shorter, much different life. This is me in my walker. Um, I couldn't walk for three years and I didn't smile for five. The only Bengali water knew, word I knew was water. But somewhere along the line, my Denzel Washington charisma and my Kevin Hart body <laughs> managed, to, uh, managed to get the attention of a very special nurse. This is sliding doors moment number two. This nurse took such an interest in me. She was volunteering in Dhaka, Bangladesh from the United States. She took such an interest in me that she actually wanted to adopt me. She couldn't adopt me for some reason, some technicality. Um, so she made it her mission, if you so to say, to make sure that I ended up in the adoption system. She really wanted to make sure that happened. She couldn't adopt me, so she wanted to make sure someone did. And again, I didn't end up in the orphanage system. She did that and it worked. She really made it a goal of hers. And I got adopted to a family in Tasmania. So this is, um, this is my family in Tasmania. Um, I've had an absolutely amazing life. Um, I've traveled far, I've been to places, I've met amazing people. Um, I've clearly eaten a lot of food since then. So <laughs> but um, you know, I think today serves as a, as, a, as a moment for us all to know that while we're listening to 15 different people and sharing our stories, they're all different, but they're also the same. And they're also the same as all of you. 
They're the same as the people that you talk to daily. They're the same as the people that you sit next to at work. And they're the same as the people that you ride a bus or train with. Everyone's stories are different, but they're the same because they're all created by choices. Choices that people make on a daily basis. Now, whether you know that you're making that choice or not at the time, it's absolutely up to you to make that informed decision. Make that decision the best you can. Make it with the correct information and make it with the best intentions. Making choices with the best intentions is always going to put you in a position where you've done all you can. These are some of the pictures of the life that I've lived. I've managed to go skydiving, bull riding. I've been to Cuba. I've been to India. I go to the Yankees. <laughs> I met Gerard Butler on the corner of a street one day. <laughs> this is my crew. <laughs> and here's uh, some friends and family. Um, so guys, that's my story, really. I've, I've lived the life that I could have. Unlike the story Lion, I never ever got to meet my real mother. I never will. I've accepted that. I understand that's not going to happen. But whilst she was a number to many of the world that didn't exist, she made sure I had a life where I would exist. Now, I do live, I have a little saying that I have on my door as I leave each day. And it is that no matter what cards I'm dealt in this world, I will always be successful. Now, I'll always be successful because that's how my faith is and that's how I'm built. And I also have three other little words that I live by as well, which are tattooed right here on my hand or my wrist. Those words read, just keep living. That's all we can do. We can just keep living. Um, I want you to enjoy the rest of the day. Um, don't give me a round of applause. Please give Noni, Laura, all the other speakers, and everyone that worked on Story Lab a big round of applause. Because, guys, it's been an absolutely amazing experience to come up and talk to you guys. Thank you. Thank you.